Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Yeah, no big deal. Just uh, sending water to my house using the power of the sun. Yeah, just a uh, everyday thing around here. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. Let's get started. Why did I point over there? That makes zero sense. Let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guns and Guitars. And today we're gonna to take a break from our regularly scheduled content to bring you another solar off-grid project. Why am I doing another one? Well, because my first one worked out so well and it's still working out so well. In fact, before we get into this video, let's do a quick update about my off-grid workshop. Okay, so firstly, you can see now that I have two solar panels now feeding my charge controller and my batteries are still holding up great. I have used every single high draw power tool in that workshop from bandsaw to spindle sander, table saw, CNC router, dust collector, all those things that I was concerned about drawing too much power for the inverter, the inverter handles it just fine. In fact, that Sunwheel inverter, remember I was telling you that it had an issue with the display, it would kind of go haywire when I powered up my tools? That, for whatever reason, stopped happening. And now it just shows me a solid battery voltage no matter what tool I'm running, which is very helpful because now I can monitor, you know, how much power I'm drawing. In fact, I like that inverter so much that I got the same brand right here for this project. Now, what is this project? Today, I'm going to take my home off grid for less than 500 bucks. That's right. My whole house. Just kidding. No, we are not taking my whole house off grid. Basically, we're making my house off grid capable. When the power goes out, I can live without electricity, but what I can't live without is water. My storage tank is about a half acre away from my house and downhill. So when the power goes out, the booster pump cannot pump water up to my house and water doesn't flow uphill naturally. So I need to be able to get my well house off grid so that my booster pump can run in the case of a power outage. Now, instead of just doing like a UPS or something that would get us by until the power comes back on, I decided I'm just gonna go fully off grid with it. That way, no matter what happens or no matter how long the power goes out, we can still get water up to our house. Now the heart and soul of this project, essentially, just like my solar workshop, is the battery. Here I have a Golden Mate LifePo4, that means lithium iron phosphate, 100 amp hour battery. Now, why did I go with Golden Mate this time? Well, because they sent it to me. <laughs> okay, but since Golden Mate was kind enough to send me this battery, I'm gonna do my best to showcase it as well as possible. But it is just a battery. I don't know how you make a battery look cool. Check out this battery! Whoa, battery! Side sweeping shot of the battery! Fly over the battery! Let's look at the back of the battery! There's nothing except for this cool QR code. Battery! Okay, so yes, it's just a LifePo4 battery. There's a lot of benefits going lithium iron phosphate over standard lead acid or AGM batteries. The one problem though that we're gonna have to deal with here is that LifePo4 batteries cannot be charged in below freezing temperatures. You actually need to have a separate module that measures the temperature of your battery. And so that's this module right here. So that's why for this one, I made sure to get the Victron Smart Sense battery sensor um, to make sure this thing doesn't charge. I'm also gonna do some extra insulation. I'm gonna be dropping this battery inside a crate that I insulated just with some trash, some foam packaging that I had laying around. I'm gonna be using the same Trina 250 watt solar panel that I featured in my last video, uh, just because again, you know, my local solar contractor it just sells them for cheap. I don't know if he just buys them in bulk and sells the ones that are left over from his contracts. But 80 bucks for a 250 watt panel, it's hands down the best deal. And so that's probably the biggest tip that I can give you in this video is not only start with a high quality lithium battery like a Golden Mate one, but also look for your local solar contractors that are selling solar panels for cheap, a lot cheaper than you can get them on Amazon. But that's enough blabbing. I'm gonna hook all this up get the Bluetooth networks all introduced to each other. And I'm gonna take you guys down to my well house where we're gonna install it. All right, we got everything hooked up and running. I've got everything set up and plugged into the Victron Smart Connect app. This one is the battery sensor. And this one here is the charge controller. The other two are from my other shed. You can see if I open up the charge controller, you can see that we are reading the t battery temperature right there. It says it's 16 degrees Celsius. So that's what you actually need in order for your charge controller to shut off. Uh, when it gets below the temperature. All right, and welcome to my wonderful well house. Let's go ahead and get this stuff installed. Tight space. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit myself and a tripod and our solar rig in there, but we'll see if we can figure it out. All 
All right, got it all hooked up. As you can see, or here rather, our booster pump is running. So I'm not gonna unplug it just yet, but I am gonna go ahead and connect everything, pop those circuit breakers, go ahead and power this sucker on. All right, I powered off. So real quick, I'm going to unplug this. Okay, now we're off grid. Okay, and it pumped back on. So it's working. Hey Siri, call my sexy wife. Hey baby, I got it plugged in now. Yeah, turn on the shower and then turn on the two faucets and then flush the toilet. Turn on the shower, like full blast? Full blast. Okay. All right. Flush the toilet? Yeah, did you turn on the two faucets? Yeah. Okay, and flush the toilet? That's on camera, by the way. <laughs> Our water's off grid. Want me to shut it all off? Yeah, you can go ahead and shut it all off. Okay. Thank you. Love you. Welcome. Bye. Love you too. Bye. All right, got the solar panel all hooked up. Let's check out our Victron app. It is a cloudy day and it is the evening and the sun is way over there. So it's like barely touching the photo panel. And uh, it's got the shadow of my trailer right there, not helping either. So we're only bringing in 31 watts, but the battery's mostly full anyway. So um, here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to just let this run overnight and see if a single 100 amp hour battery is enough to power our water needs through the night. And then I'll come out here in the morning, see what the state of our battery is and see if it's charging. All right, giving you guys a quick update. I know I said I was gonna come out the next day and check on it, and that didn't happen because it was raining, pouring rain the next morning. And so I just left it hooked up, even though it wasn't charging because of the rain, I let it go. It went for three days straight without any sunlight. It kept water going to my house. Unfortunately, the rain lasted for like five days. So on the morning of the fourth day, when I came out and checked on it, my battery was uh, getting close to 10% charge left. And so I gave up and just connected my well pump to grid power to get us through because I knew there's still a couple more days of rain left. Now this is kind of a special circumstance here in Arizona. We generally don't go five days without sunlight. That's actually very rare for us. Um, we're grateful for it. We needed the precipitation, obviously it's a desert. But if I'm being completely honest, if I want this thing to be 100% off grid and I want to be able to account for anomalies like that, then I probably need at least one more battery and one more photo panel because it was still charging even though it was rainy outside somehow. Uh, it was still picking up 20 or 30 watts through my solar panel. Obviously not the 250 that I was hoping for. But I gotta say I'm extremely impressed with that Golden Mate battery because calculating my usage of how much that pump draws uh, and kind of logging how much water we were using it really shouldn't last more than like two hours total of pumping. We went three days of normal usage. I mean, doing laundry, washing dishes, taking showers. We didn't hold back at all. We were really just testing the limits and the math doesn't really add up. Uh, and so probably honestly, what's more likely is that my pump is just not drawing quite the wattage that I think that it would, but I can certainly attest that if this thing was less than hundred amp hours, it would not have lasted that long. So very impressed by that. Uh, of course, the sun's shining out now, so I got it plugged in and we've been off grid the last few days and it's working awesome. And so, yeah, I'm glad that we got the rainstorm because, you know, I could have just told you it was all rainbows and butterflies and everything works perfect and it far exceeded my expectations, which is all kind of true. Uh, but having some perspective of, okay, what happens when the sun doesn't come out for five days? Uh, it's just good to know. And so let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this project. And uh, we'll get back to some guitar building here real soon. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars. I'll see you in that next video.